What's up guys, Alpine Gremlin again here with some more World of Tanks gameplay. Today we're taking a look at my AMX AC MLE 1948, I mean. It's a French Tier 8 tank destroyer. We're playing on Siegfried Line, and I'm with my two, and I'm joined by my usual platoon mates, Volker Ball and Hamster X of 5D. The... French tank destroyers are an interesting bunch because they start off really slow and sluggish. And they turn into and they ended up merging into these really fast and deceptively well armored from the front anyway. Just assault gun monsters. However, as good as their as good as their frontal armor alone is, they do have several drawbacks and several weak points which you'll see during this game. I'm using my speed to quickly get across the field because I need to get into that. F I need to get into positions to cover the town. Now, generally, you want to stay out of close quarters in this thing. That's what I find anyway. Generally, because if you can see those two, you can see the machine gunner hatch and the range finder bar at the top. Those two right there are some serious weak points. In addition, you've got that giant AA gun on the back as well. Playing this tank is about conserving those weak points. Because most tanks will in fact bounce off of your frontal armor. It's 150 millimeters thick and it's very well angled. You, have, you also have a tiny, tiny, tiny lower glacis. Volker Ball puts that T29 out of commission. We do have some people in the field, so I'm going to go ahead and keep supporting the advance in town. So you can see me trying to get into a position here. That if you can see how I'm positioned, this tank performs very well when you position it in kind of a defilade fashion. So you've got you've got that 150 millimeters of sloped armor, and you slope it even more. Additionally, it makes the weak points on your tank a little bit harder to hit and increases their effective armor thickness by a little bit. It also, in most cases, will hide that machine gun turret and make it an even smaller target. Weak point management is a very important part of playing this tank. And I also partially have my lower glacies covered up as well. Volker Ball and Hamster are going to move in ahead. They're going to use their BL-10s with... Uh, there, which is one of the best guns in the game, one, one of the most powerful anyway. They're going to go ahead and clear out the streets before I get in there and see if they can do any do damage to anything. Because basically what this setup is, they've got the punch, but my gun has the DPM. I don't do as much alpha as they do, but I can fire several shots while they're still reloading. So I can cover their reloads. Now you can see how paranoid I am about cover about watching my flanks here. I'm always, if you notice throughout this video, I'm always looking onto my side in here. And that's because the sides and rear of this thing are only 30 millimeters thick. Your flanks are very weak. So, basically, anything can penetrate your side and rear armor. Anything that you're going to face in this tank. Now, you're going to see me get hit and penetrated by, by these black princes. And I bounce off of the top of that guy's turret. Now, these guys obviously know where to shoot me. And it can be difficult because when you're driving this thing, when you've got people that know how to shoot you, it can be, diff it, it, it's, it can be frustrating and difficult to perform. And with a thousand hit points, I really can't afford to be ex exchanging shots with these guys at, right now because I'm not going to have any if I at this rate. But... You can see the Black Prince bounces off my side armor. I was angled pretty well, and I shoot through the building and take him out. So now I'm moving on. It doesn't look like we have too much over near the cap circle, so I'm going to relocate again. This French tank destroyer is very good at that. Now this, this VK should have been... I should have killed off this VK a lot earlier than he got killed off, but I rushed, a, I rushed several of my shots, and didn't connect with him. Luckily, he's just throwing high explosive, though. However, the fact that he's throwing high explosive means that I have to 
ensure that I do not show him my side armor at all. Because his high explosive can penetrate my side armor, and if it does, he's gonna do full damage. You will have you will find that one of your your one of the biggest things that can mess you up in this tank are high explosive is high explosive and artillery because you have none. Now Again, this tiger is going to be hard-pressed to penetrate my frontal armor. But if he gets my side armor, even at the slightest angle, he has the potential to get through. You will find that M4 Shermans with derp guns will really mess you up. I've had that happen several times where I've been flanked because I've been focusing on, you know, several enemies at once. An M4 Sherman with a derp comes around, and he does full damage. So, again, high explosive shells, unless... As long as you keep that front armor at them at all times and at a slight angle like I have it here high explosive won't do as much damage to you but if you give them any part of your side armor it will mess you up because it will penetrate now I don't know where this tiger is I don't I haven't spotted him but I'm just making sure you can see I'm rocking back and forth a little bit I'm angling my armor making it difficult for him to hit those weak points now that KV-5 has got a serious case of tunnel vision. So I'm just going to keep putting shots in him. I take that blind shot. I don't know if it hit or not at this point. But the KV-5 is still fixated on the IS-2 and the FCM-50 ton. So I'm going to take a quick snapshot at the Tiger. That was a good hit. Now both my platoon mates are down. And it's 7 on 7 right now. 7 kills to 7 kills. So it's a pretty even matchup. But you're going to see I will have a distinct advantage that will let me win the, the ending to this game. Now, an interesting thing about those weak points is you can see the rangefinder bar. The only weak point is if you... If you, you can see where um, it connects with the tank, but if they hit the sides of the range finding bars before you get that little before you get that little hatch behind it, if they shoot if they don't if it doesn't penetrate into that hatch, it won't do any damage. You'll see. You could see a hit right there on the on my range finder bar there. That was a zero damage pen because you can see that it didn't penetrate the little hatch in back. So enemies can shoot at it, but unless they shoot at the middle of the hatch. Then it won't really be able. They won't. They won't do any damage. So the FCM 50 ton and the IS2 have seem to have some trouble killing this KV5. So I'm gonna move over and give him a hand. I set a nice. I set him on fire. Got a nice fire, and the IS finishes him off. Now that you're gonna see in a second. Why I absolutely love fast tanks. Because you guys know that I... Most of you guys that have been following me for a while know that I adore the fast uh, maneuverable vehicles as opposed to the heavily well-armored ones. I do have some heavily well-armored vehicles, but I much prefer the speed. And this is why coming up right here. There's a JT-88, Tiger, 8.8 centimeter. He's a he, he's got a he has an absolute ridiculous damage per minute output and he can shred pretty much anything. Our IS just got killed off and the JT88 is going to do some serious damage to that STI who's really can't afford it. Now, I bounce off now I my tank rocks up a little bit and I miss that shot, but I get right up behind him. And this Yag Tiger 88 knows he's in a tough spot, so he's basically not even fighting back against me. He's going to take out that eye at the STI. Now he's going to move forward, but at this point, he's I pretty much got me and he's pretty much in my clutches. He can't really get away. The only thing I'm worried about is artillery. So I take him out and you can see Artie splashes right behind me. So I'm getting out of there right now as soon as possible. Now, I'm going to move If you think I'm paranoid of artillery in a normal situation, and, and other tanks, even more so in French tanks, because artillery does so much damage to French tanks, because they don't really have any armor at all. 
Now, this right, this position I'm in here, I'm just trying to protect myself from artillery. I'm minimizing the area they have to shoot at me. But generally, this is a bad, bad place to have your tank angled if you're in a combat situation with other tanks. You can see they got shots at my top. My angle is flattened out to them. And they can shoot the machine gun. The, the mach They can shoot all my weak points, especially the, the anti-aircraft gun. So I'm just sitting here for a cube for about five seconds while my spot disappears. Now I'm going to move out to try and engage the VK 3002D. But I don't want to sit here. I'm going to move into the town where I have more arty cover. Our IS-2 is scouting for artillery. However, our artillery is a little preoccupied with this VK on his doorstep. Now remember, there's still three enemy tanks in play. There's a VK who's spotting, there's a Lorraine 155-51, and there's an M53-M55 artillery. The IS just spotted the M5355. But again, I already cannot get on him because he's preoccupied with trying to protect himself. So there's the VK3002D. I'm going to be very cautious about moving out, but I but since the IS2 just got spotted, I can assume that the artillery is going to be focused on the IS2 as opposed to me. So I want to make sure my arty survives cuz he's going to be provide he can he's going to be providing long range cover in these crucial final moments of the battle here. So I'm going to take out the VK. And our IS-2 just got killed by the M55-5355, who just defended himself. So now it's just me and the Batshat 155-55 artillery against two enemy artilleries. So I'm obviously going to be scouting, because I've got the speed, and I'm not an arty. The Batshat's going to move through the town. And basically, Volker makes a suggestion that I switch to HE, which is why I switch ammo types here. But you gotta remember that there's also a Lorraine 15551 out there. And if he's at full HP, HE isn't gonna HE might not do a whole lot for me. So I'm gonna switch back to AP so I have maximum penetration potential. In case I encounter the Lorraine. But if I do but once I kill the Lorraine I'm gonna switch back to high explosive shells because the M5355 is on very low HP. There's the Lorraine as expected. I counter him first. I take I miss my shot, but he misses his shot. Now, when you're when you're attacking already, you can't be timid. Especially after they fire. He's not gonna be loaded for a while. So I'm gonna get right up on him. And I'm just not even gonna stop moving. I fire, roll low, but don't stop because I'm just gonna ram him. And that does it. So now I've got to quickly move out of the area. You can see those artillery splashes from the M5355 landing right next to me. So i got to keep moving. Now I switch back to high explosive. Now an interesting thing I want to point out about this tank is if you're used to, if you're like me and you're used to um, things like the Jag Panther Spy, the Jag Panther Spy, the Jag Tiger, the, the Jag Panzer E100, very tall TDs, because this is so low to the ground, where, whereas the German TDs, you know, for the most part, their weak spots are their lower hull. Your gun is above your lower hull, so you can cover that up while still being able to shoot. The thing about the AC is it's more effective in a defilade position, like on hills, because its gun is so low to the ground, you, you'll, you won't be able to shoot at an enemy, but they can still hit your weak points. So you want to be aware of your positioning at all times, because you might not be able to hit an enemy where they can hit your weak points perfectly. So knowing where your gun is in relation to their gun and whether or not you can hit something is of utmost importance because you can get shredded without even being able to return fire. So so we're pretty much closing up here. The bat shots swooping around the field outside of town. I'm going along the one line. And we should be encountering him very shortly. There's only a few other places he can be. I'm thinking C1s, because that's where he was last spotted.
And as expected, he's right around there. About, uh, give or take a grid square. And the Batshat 15555 takes him out for the victory. Alright, so here's the after action report. You can see I got a nice 63,283 credits from that res result. Uh, doubled experience is 4,434. Um, I got things for an event, so my base credit uh, was my base credit income was 31,889 credits. Out of 19 shots, I hit 14, so 74% hit ratio, not bad. I detected 674 HP worth of damage that my team did, and I dealt 4,744 damage myself. I got the Mastery Badge Ace Tanker for my AC finally, and a Steel Wall, because you remember all those shells bouncing and uh, or high explosive shells I took to the front. You can see I pretty I did a I pretty much had contact and and or damaged spotted whatever uh, a lot of the enemies on the enemy team. I killed off the Tiger 88 as you remember, the Lorraine, Artillery, the Black Prince, and the VK-3002D, and hit a lot of other tanks. So, anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this battle, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.